Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. Now, a few weeks ago, I mean, it seems like ages, but it was a few weeks ago, I talked about the really beautiful symphonies of Friedrich Gernsheim, the much neglected German composer. Uh, and he really was quite gifted, and he wrote very little abstract orchestral music. He wrote some concertos, there are a few of those, and he wrote four symphonies and very little else, but a lot of very lovely chamber music. In any case, the other major symphonic work of his is simply called, and I have it right here, Zu einem Drama, about a drama, to a drama, of a drama, something like that, a drama. It's a Tondichtung, a tone poem, for large orchestra, it's his Opus 82, and he composed it right after the turn of the 20th century. And it's gorgeous, a beautiful, beautiful piece. You know, it, it, it's hard, people talk about Gernsheim and they say, well, he sounds like Brahms, he sounds a little like Wagner, he sounds a little like Strauss. He's one of those, he sounds a little like kind of guys. And the reason is because he's, he, he was a conservative composer. He wasn't hugely original, but what he was, was really talented. So in his own way, his music is not quite any of those other people. It's just a big 18 minute long chunk of really good German romantic music, period. I mean, really good. It's got good tunes. It's wonderfully well orchestrated. He knows how to write a climax. His proportions are, are elegant and always true. The music is expressive. It's passionate. It's just marvelous. And here it is in a very fine performance um, featuring the SWR Radio Symphony Orchestra Kaiserslautern under Klaus Arp on the Sterling label. Now, some of you mentioned this when we were talking about Gernsheim, you were talking about the symphonies and you said, well, you know, the, the, you know, Zu Einem Drama is pretty good too. And I said, yes, it is. And I recommended this recording at that time, but I didn't have a chance to talk about it. So now we're gonna do it. And the fun thing that, that comes with this, I mean, just as much fun, is the second symphony of August Klughart. August Klughart, from, he lived from 1847 to 1902. His second symphony, is called Leonora, or Lenora, not Leonora, Lenora. It's also called Symphonic Poem, also Symphony Number no. 2. It's one of those in-betweeny kind of pieces. It's programmatic, is it a symphony? It's progressive, German progressive. But the story, well, we all know the story because Raff did a Lenora, there are operas about it. It's the same, the same story as Dvorak's The Spectre's Bride, basically. I mean, it's a famous, famous, famous story. It's very easily summarized. Woman is in love with her soldier boyfriend. He's off fighting the Seven Years' War or something like that. Well, the war's over, there's a big, grand march as all the troops come home victorious, but her boyfriend is not amongst them. So she fears he's dead and she curses God and commits blasphemy because there's a lesson here. And in committing blasphemy, who should pop up? Poof! But her boyfriend is a knight in armor with his beautiful horse and he said he's there to take her away to their their wedding abode, and she jumps on the horse, and off they go, jump it, 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 up, up, up. Now that's the different one, but they off they go, and as they go running along, she begins to sort of suspect that something isn't quite what it should be, like there's this empty clattering inside of his armor or whatnot, you know. So they get off the horse, and he reveals that he's a skeleton. He's dead and he's come for her and he he takes her to her permanent abode in the land of death <laughs> now in the Dvorak you know she she prays and dawn comes up and the evil spirits go away but in the German story of course <laughs> being a German story she gets sucked down to hell for committing blasphemy because you know it's, 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 it's Lutheran, you know, it's all about sin and punishment and eternal suffering and, you know, anyway, so that's what happens. It's a really wonderful story. It makes a wonderful musical setting. And the Raff's fifth, fifth symphony is Lenora and it's, 
it's a beautiful symphony. Yeah, that's the most famous version, symphonic-wise, of the story. This one is just as good. It really is. Actually, some people might think it's better. First of all, it's shorter, which is always a good thing. It's 33 minutes long. It's in three parts, but four movements. You have a sort of passionate opening movement, an allegro-ish thing. And then there's the big march. All the soldiers come home. And then there's a slow movement where she is in, in, in anguish and misery. And then, of course, the fourth movement is the ride to the abyss. And it's really cool. And it's fun. And this, this performance is with, is with the Anhaltische Philharmonie under Manfred Meyerhofer. And, you know, it really shows you how important it is to have a really good timpanist. <laughs> because, you know, if you have a good timpanist to put a real bottom on the orchestra and drive home those climaxes, it could make much music which would otherwise seem rather uninteresting, unbelievably exciting, which this turns out to be. The sonics are quite good. They're both live recordings. The audiences are quiet. You can tell it's live. I mean, you hear some rustling here and there, but there's nothing to annoy you. And both works are marvelous and splendidly recorded by the German radio people. You know, I mean, it, it, it's top quality stuff. I'm very happy that Sterling got a hold of this recording and that they were able to issue it. It deserves wide exposure. Both composers were very good, solid German style composers. Gernsheim and Klughart. And, you know, you're not going to hear their names every day, but uh, they, they deserve a listen now and again. And this is just too beautiful. German symphonic poems that sound extremely symphonic and extremely German, and they work wonderfully well. I was listening to these in the car, going back and forth to Connecticut as I was, you know, moving, and it, it really chewed up the time very, very nicely. I mean, you had about 50 minutes of, of absolute unalloyed listening pleasure all the way through, and you'll enjoy it as much as I did, I'm sure. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.